And another thing I'd like to cover, uh, just go over briefly, is some of the lymph drainage, the cervical lymph nodes. There was some recent research, if you're interested, you can look it up, that was done in China, uh, maybe a year or two ago, maybe a year ago, it's very recent, that to uh, talks about the removal of the lymph nodes, cervical lymph nodes, and afterwards the symptoms of these patients alzheimer's went away so alzheimer's plaque etc that they removed these lymph nodes bypassed that filtration process improved the drainage from the head and those symptoms memory uh uh, if I'm trying to think of what else was in that paper, but just task, being able to uh, complete a series of tasks, those kinds of functions all improved after that surgery. What I gain, what I infer from that paper is how important drainage from the head is. It's not, to me, I'm, I'm not really hearing that it's about the neck. It's about making sure that the head drains. Of course, if the head is going to drain, it has to go somewhere. And the first place it has to go is through the neck. And it doesn't stop at the neck, it runs either back into the lymph terminus, 70% roughly of the, of the lymph drains into the left lymph terminus. The other 30% is here. The other way, one way to quickly think about that is roughly this right upper quadrant is drained through the right and the entire rest of the body is drained through the left. So we want to make sure I'm not, is, is to make sure that this thoracic outlet is open. So especially around the clavicle, the first rib, so that when you come down behind the clavicle and you push that first firm body that you feel is, is uh, the first rib. So it's a little bit, it's a little higher, if you will, on this side, on the left, and she has some symptoms on the left. So it's a little narrower. This, this gap here of this thoracic, thoracic outlet or thoracic inlet, depending on how you want to say it, uh, is not very wide. So it doesn't take a lot of tension in this area to uh, affect flow, both neural to the arm and circulation to the arm and to circulation to and from the head. So um, you can, of course, treat the lymph nodes individually, but I find it much more effective to make sure the drainage or the drainage points are open. So something like this, taking pressure off the clavicle, something like this, where we, sorry, um, here we're kind of again taking, so the clavicle is coming over like this, pardon me, okay, so like this, I can lift this, can we get a from this side, more of what's happening yeah. at the clavicle, this area. So it's this area that we're basically taking tension off of here. And so that's allowing this to improve the drainage. This, even this, this actually for her, as I have her on this position, that's so much of it's just the practice. As I positioned her here, I can feel, so I'm lifting the scapula. AC joint clavicle. And this is really, the body really enjoys this, likes this. There, there we go. It's already kind of changing. Do you notice that or? Yeah. So it's just drain, it's beginning to open up and drain. The subclavian vein, you got the jugular vein here, subclavian vein. And you're gonna have the brachiocephalic inside thorax. So 
so that's a little piece um it would also be good and i like to open this up first i think of this as well again it's gonna have if we drain the head it has to have somewhere to go with it. we don't want it to stop at the neck we want it to continue back down uh, beyond the neck so opening this up first is really important and usually unless you have a really significant lymphedema case sometimes you see it in mastectomies certainly uh, in older mastectomies where they did uh, radiation treatment, you get a lot of scarring and, and that really backs up the lymphatic system. The mastectomy by itself, it depends how the surgery was done. They often take those sinal nodes, um, which affects the drainage on that side significantly, but it's not the same kind of scarring that is created from uh, uh, radiation. So. Uh, but you can also treat here, coming under the, the jawline. There's a lot of lymphatics through here. And remember, this is the basically the root of the tongue. So by releasing this, you know, you're going to draw this back. A lot, you know, I, when I learned it, it was like 70%. I don't know that they still claim that number, but 70% of the, a lot of lymph is in the skin. So just even a, a lot of lymphatic drainage is done very superficially. It's just almost skin brushing, but you're brushing it up towards the drainage point. But I do find that useful here, just to come along this jawline and drain it back towards the jugular. If I really felt like that was restricted, you know, I would work this, this uh, the root of the tongue area. Hypoglossal nerve runs through here. You feel that line on this side a little bit. So sometimes that needs to be released. And then you can just kind of, either with, I don't usually work with uh, oils and such, but I would just stretch this down through the tissue like this. And encourage you're kind of giving direction, reminding the body of the direction, the drainage. You know, if you wanted to see the skin brushing, kind of following the SEM, because the SEM, this muscle here, is just embedded. It, it runs, the, the lymph nodes just track down that muscle. So, you know, kind of circumferentially. And so you can just, you know, really work gently. Uh, yeah, I'm not really so much into pinching that muscle a whole lot. That's not my bag. All right, that's pretty good. 